Get to know Daphne Maxwell Reed. She's an incredible actress, photographic artist, designer, and also known as Vivian Banks on NBC's hit show, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. She and I discuss her contributions in the industry, her amazing travels, and the delicious dishes featured in her cookbook. Daphne Maxwell Reed, welcome to the Shondria Show. How are you today? Thank you. <laughs> doing very well today. Yeah, getting stuff done, so I'm doing very well. Yes, you are. Well, let's dive on in and chat today. The world has known you as our beloved Aunt Viv on seasons four through six of NBC's hit show, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. How was your experience on set on the show's reboot, Bel Air, in this first uh, season? The reboot? Yes. Uh, the your re experience. The reimagining. Okay. <laughs> How was your experience on back on set of a show that you... It was amazing. It was, <laughs> it was such a wonderful occasion. My experience with the new Bel Air, the reimagining of the fish out of water story of the Fresh Prince was an amazing, amazing week. That cast is so fantastic. Each one of them is a wonderful actor and actress. And I love the way they have time now to develop these characters and show you more than just us standing in the room and making a decision. <laughs> you get to find out who they are and where they came from. And it's so beautifully written. It's cinematically shot. It's, it's just a joy to be a part of. I enjoyed watching some of the behind the scenes uh, clips I saw online um, where you all were, where the cast was fanning out, <laughs> seeing you and that touched my heart um, so much just to see I felt the so interaction. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. And then how do you feel about the new generation of fans who will get to know um, those staple characters from the series? Well, that's great. We're, the old show is on our third generation. So hopefully this is the fourth and the fifth generation that's going to know about Uncle Phil and Aunt Viv and see where it takes them. And this is a contemporary take on a story. So I'm anxious to see it become iconic as well. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Now, you are no stranger to the creative arts with an incredible body of work in television and film. What inspired your interest in the performing arts prior to the start of your career? Probably my mother telling me that I've been acting since I was born. <laughs> that I always wanted to be the center of attention. I think it's the middle child syndrome. But um, I just enjoyed it. I thought it was a hoot. When I was doing it in junior high and high school, it, I grew up in New York City, so I was surrounded by cultural arts all the time. And I just thought it was a hoot. I didn't expect to make a career out of it because I could not see examples of Black women who had made a career or a living out of doing that. They, they just weren't around to be seen. They weren't on television, you know, get one or two parts on television and that was it. So that's not something I aimed toward, but um, I'm a very curious person. I like to learn new things. And while I was in college, I was modeling in New York and um, got discovered by a woman named Eileen Ford who had the big agency in New York. And I was flying back and forth between Chicago where at Northwestern where I was and New York doing these jobs. And I thought, oh, they pay me to do this. Okay, smile. Okay, I can now go back to school. After that, I graduated and I was married and had a son, but I continued modeling in Chicago and then started doing commercials. And uh, I said, wow, these people are making some good money doing commercials. <laughs> Maybe I'll continue to do this as best I can. And uh, learned how to do narrations and did lots of narrations. And then this guy named Robert Conrad came to town and you'll have to look him up. He was the original, uh, I guess, star of the Wild Wild West, the original Wild Wild West before Will got to redo it. Um, he came to town to Chicago to do a show called The Duke and he hired me. 
And that was my first television exposure, but it was <laughs> so much fun. And I was smart enough to pay attention to what was going on around me. So I knew how to position myself to get the best lighting and where to go, how to move it on a set, how to interact, how to listen to the other characters and react to them. I learned a lot being on set. So about two or three years later, I moved to California, divorced. And I said, well, let me take my hand at jumping in the big pond of LA. And I called Robert Conrad and I said, I'm in town. He said, oh, good. I have a part for you in my new show called, um, oh, what was it called? A Man Called Sloan. And it's an hour show. And here's a good person to go to. Go sign up with this agent. He'll take you. And that's how I got into show business. <laughs> I haven't stopped working since. <laughs> I love this story so much because it's apparent how tenacious you have always been. <laughs> um, I love your roots in New York City. Um, I love your roots here. I'm, from, I'm in Chicago right now. This is my home. Oh. So I love your roots in Chicago. Um, but I love how you just, you never stop moving, you know? No. <laughs> you never, you're, you're never idle. You're always going after great opportunities and those opportunities are continually created. And I just love that. That's inspiring to me as a journalist. So thank you for sharing that story. <laughs> Not only going after opportunities, but learning something new. I'm really a person who's curious and, and wants to know how things are made and how things are done and what I can learn out of this. And I've had some fabulous journeys just trying to learn something. Absolutely. Now, early on in your career as a model and actress, you were daringly designing your own wardrobe. What sparked this creativity to start creating <laughs> your own, your own <laughs> wardrobe? That is amazing. <laughs> I have been sewing since I was probably eight years old. I've had a sewing machine all my life. My mother was a seamstress and I just took to it and loved it. And I was surrounded by black women who I consider professionals in the hand arts. They could knit and crochet and embroider and sew. And, and I learned how to do all those things. And it was such a joy to be able to create something, to take a stick and make something out of it. And um, I guess I've just been pursuing that kind of adventure all my life. But I've been sewing so much that I made all my clothes for college. I made all, I made everything that I wore. Um, the night before a homecoming that I was running for the queen, they said, you need a white gown. I said, I, I don't have one, but the fabric store is still open. So I whipped up a white gown that night. I, I just always have a sewing machine. So, um, designing and wearing my own clothes was because I didn't like what was in the store. They didn't have the colors I liked and they didn't fit me right. No, I'll just start from scratch and make it myself. Well, I think that's awesome. So when you were on set, did that turn into like, hey, you're making your own wardrobe. Can you make some wardrobe for the other characters? No, the other oh. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Okay. I just showed up with a bunch of clothes and they okay. chose what they liked out of it. And it happened to be all the stuff that I had made. Okay. So it worked out. It worked out really well. Oh, you yeah. like your style. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. love that. So present day, you have your own beautiful clothing line. Tell me about the Daphne style and your amazing custom pieces. <laughs> um, I started making a Chinese silk brocade topper, I call them, uh, for myself maybe about 15 years ago, because I'm a fabriholic and I fell in love with Chinese silk brocade. So what I did was made these little jackets that I wore. And every time I wore one of them, somebody stopped me in the street and said, where did you get that from? And I said, I made it. And they said, oh, would you make me one? And I said, no. <laughs> so. <laughs> These are mine. I'm making it for me. So I had lots of them. And uh, my husband has an institute where he trains filmmakers and they have a fundraising fashion show every year. 
And he says, I want you to make some of those toppers for the show and do a line. I said, but then people will want me to make it for them. <laughs> and he said, yeah. <laughs> and I said, okay. So I put my line on and out of the dozen coats, I sold four of them off the runway. <laughs> and I said, oh, they like these. <laughs> so I started making them, but in order to not overwhelm myself, I'm not interested in manufacturing. I consider them each art pieces. So I hand make all of them. So now it's a custom business. Oh, I love that. And I also find it really hilarious that you were adamant about like saying no for so long. Like, where'd you get that? No, I'm not making you one. I'm not making you one. <laughs> like you were so and then finally you go, okay, fine. I will concede today. I will make four. <laughs> I'm not making a lot of them. <laughs> um, and so it makes it so much more precious um, to have if it's something that you're hand making. How long does it take you to make one? About five or six hours. Oh, wow. But don't tell anybody. Okay. Your secret is safe with me. <laughs> that is absolutely, and then you're doing linen swing coats I saw too. Um, was that, that a, a later a edition? That was the second line of coats that um, I made for the next year's fashion show. And um, I had been making swing coats and wearing swing coats, oh, 30, 40 years. They're very classic style coat. And they fit so many people because they're not super fitted. And uh, I decided to just be inspired by the rainbow. And I made a whole rainbow array of linen coats that had these incredible linings that were just fantastic. They were whimsical and, and I just had a lovely time selecting the um, linings to go with the colors that I had chosen for the coats. And they went fast. <laughs> so they're also custom made. That has to feel good, knowing like something that you created, something you really enjoy wearing, something you enjoy creating, and now someone else is enjoying wearing yes. it. <laughs> I yes. never think about that. It's lovely to show up at events and I say, oh, she's got on my coat and she's got on my coat and she's got on my coat. And they're all very proud to be wearing them, which is really warming my heart. I can imagine. Now you have a beautiful DMR Fresh Prince Doors tote bag right behind you. It's available on your website. It's custom created fabric comprising of doors captured on your international travels. What are some of the destinations that are reflected in these images? Well, this one that you see here is Cape Verde, Africa. This one is Italy. There's China up there. There's Belgium there. There's Morocco and Cuba and Venice again and England and France. And there's some more France. I got a lot of them. And they are a lot of places. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So was it your international travels that inspired a love of photography or were you already interested in photography before you started traveling so frequently? Yeah, I've been traveling since oh, probably since high school. I love travel. And that was one of the requirements on my second marriage. He says, what do you want out of life? I said, I want to travel. <laughs> so, okay. Done. I have, <laughs> have traveled. And I have traveled without him. And he has traveled without me. And we've just been all around the world. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful life. Um, I have been taking pictures since I was a little girl as well, because my father was an amateur photographer and he always took pictures of us. My mother made all our clothes. So we were always doing the Easter parade and going to the park and we were always dressed to the nines and my mother was dressed to the nines. And uh, he gave us cameras when we were kids and I've always had a camera. So I go nowhere without a camera and a sewing machine, standard equipment <laughs> and now a computer. Um, so I've been taking pictures a long time. And when I would travel, I'd come back and share some of my photos with friends of mine I was working with. And they said, well, why don't you do a gallery show of these pictures? They're beautiful. And I said, hey, you got to be an artist to do that. And they said, girlfriend. <laughs> so 
on my 60th birthday, I said, I'm gonna take the photos I've accumulated and see if I can make a collection to hang in a gallery. And I did, and I realized that I had been taking pictures of doors all over the world. And so many of my pictures were doors that that's what I decided my collection was gonna be. How many pictures of doors that you had? Oh, thousands. How many different doors? Thousands. Oh I only take God. one picture of a door. Um, you get one shot. That's it. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm curious, what's the longest flight you've been on? The longest which? Flight that you've been on, that you've taken. Oh, probably going to... Um, a little island off of Fiji, because you had to go to California first, and then you had to go from California to Australia, then you had to go from Australia to Fiji, and then you had to go from Fiji to this little island. That was a long time. Many, many hours. And how do you, what do you do? What do you do, sleep? Do you write? Do you watch movies? What do you do for that long of a flight? I do a little bit of sleeping. Mm -hmm. I do a little movie watching. I do a lot of music listening. Then I do some more sleeping. <laughs> you just busy yourself. I walk the plane because I don't like to sit more than two or three hours at a time. So walk up and down the plane, lay down, look out the window. <laughs> I just let the time pass. I kind of meditate through it. I'm inspired to travel internationally. So thank you so much. Um, um, you're the author of four books, including a mini memoir cookbook called Grace and Soul and Mother Wit, filled with photographs, letters, recipes, and beautiful memories. What are a few of your favorite dishes and memories from that book? In my book, one of my favorites and one of, uh, I guess, my family and friends' favorites is Rosalie's Waffles. Rosalie is my mother. And she makes waffles. You have to separate the eggs. You can, it, they are stupendous. <laughs> so one of my favorite recipes. Rosalie's waffles. All right. And that's in the cookbook. So we have to and get some is. of those, good, those, those goodies. That's beautiful. Well, it has been a pleasure chatting with you today. And just before we go, I have a few fun lightning round questions for you. First one, okay. what was your favorite subject in school? Mechanical drafting. Mechanical drafting? <laughs> That's awesome. Why? <laughs> I don't know. It just thrilled me to be able to create a three-dimensional thing on a two-dimensional plane. It, I love geometry, and it just all went together. Love that. I love it, love it, love it. Second one, what... What is one place in the world you look forward to traveling to? You've been to so many places. What's next on the list? Well, I'm going back to Venice, which I go every year or two. Um, but I haven't been to Greece yet. And I still am. I'm going to get there. Yes. I'm, I'm excited that there are still places you're eager to go and haven't gone yet. You've traveled so much. So that's exciting. Oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> you left on the globe. <laughs> I was supposed to do the West Coast of Africa this year, but they canceled the, um, the cruise because of COVID. So. Okay. Awesome. I didn't get to do that. That's okay. It's coming and I can't wait. <laughs> and then the last question is what is one single piece of advice for any creative seeking a fulfilling career in entertainment? Don't let the successes go to your head and don't let the failures go to your heart. They're only road markers saying do it a different way. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Daphne Maxwell Reed, it has been a pleasure chatting with you today. Thank you for being Ooh. my special guest on the Shandria Show. We want to continue to follow your journey, your recipes, and all things Daphne Maxwell Reed. What's the best way to connect with you? Daphne Maxwell Keep it all in one place, right? <laughs> yeah. Fantastic.